Hey everybody, welcome back to Life in Room 27. My name is Miss Robinson and I'm here with another math tutorial video for you guys. So today we are going to be looking at estimating our fractions. And remember, when you're doing any type of math problem, if you are able to come up with an estimated answer before you solve the actual problem itself, those estimates are always helpful so that when you solve the real problem, you can check your estimate and know that if your real answer is close to your estimate, then you have a fairly good chance of being correct. But if your real answer is far off from your estimate, then something might be wrong. So today we're going to take a look at how you can estimate fractions when you are dealing with them. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at two different strategies. One strategy that you can use when estimating your fractions is making use of a number line and plotting your fraction on a number line to see how you would estimate it. Would you round it to zero, round it to a half, or round it to a whole? The second thing that we're going to look at or the second strategy that we're going to look at is just using some mental math where you're comparing your numerator to your denominator and using that comparison to help you decide how you're going to round that fraction. As we're rounding, we're only going to be rounding to one of three places. We're either going to round our fraction to zero, we're going to round it to a half, or we're going to round it to one whole. So I'm going to show you those two strategies and then come back with some closing thoughts for this video. So I will see you in just a second. So in this lesson, we're going to talk about estimating the sums of two fractions, and we're going to talk about two different strategies that you could use. The first strategy that we're going to look at involves the use of a number line. So I've already drawn this number line out for us, and when you are creating your number line, what you want to realize is that the denominator of your fractions is going to help you to determine what your number line is going to look like. So since the denominator in both of my fractions, 1 6 and 3 6 is 6, that means my number line is going to go from 0 all the way to 6 6. Remember, we're dealing with fractions, so we're not dealing with whole numbers. So it's not going to go from 0 all the way to the whole number 6 because these represent values that are less than 1. It's going to go from 0 all the way to 6 6 because 6 6 would represent a whole. So that's the first thing that we need to keep in mind. The second thing we want to keep in mind is that I have marked your three benchmark spots on this number line. You're either going to be rounding your fraction to 0, a half, or a whole. And that's why these three red dots are here. Zero is self-explanatory on this number line. That represents nothing. Three six, this is the halfway mark. You should recognize that if you have three six, that is the same thing as you saying you have one half. If you have six slices of pizza, because we always like to talk about food when we're dealing with fractions, and you eat three of those slices of pizza, you have eaten half of the pizza. So this is the halfway mark. The third benchmark spot is going to be the one whole. Six sixths is the same thing as me saying one whole. Again, using my pizza analogy, if there are six slices of pizza in total and you ate all six of them, then you ate one whole pizza. So those are what those three red dots represent, the three spots that you may be rounding these fractions to. Once you have your number line drawn, you're going to look at your two fractions and you're going to actually plot them on the number line. So the first one I'm going to look at is one sixth. I'm going to find the 1 6th mark on my number line, which is right there, and I'm just going to plot the point so that I can see that's where 1 6th ends up being. Once I place it, I want to look at the two benchmarks that it's between. So I know it's between the benchmark of 0 and it's between the benchmark of 1 half, or in this number line, 1 half is represented as 3 6 Once I'm able to identify which two benchmarks it's sitting in between. Now all I need to do is decide, well, which of the benchmarks is it closest to? Is it closest to the benchmark of zero or is it closest to the benchmark of a half? And one way you can do that is you can actually draw the line from one sixth to zero and then one sixth to one half. What I like about doing this, if you can't already tell that it's closest to the zero, is these little lines help you to know, well, it's one spot away from zero on the number line, but it's two spots away from the one half mark. And that also helps me to know that one sixth is closer to zero on a number line than it would be to three sixth or one half. So that means I'm gonna take one sixth and I'm actually gonna round one sixth to zero. And I will put that up here in a different color so you can see it. So one sixth will become zero 
as I'm estimating my sum or estimating my fractions so I can come up with an estimated answer. Next, I'm gonna do the same thing with 3 sixths. This time, I'm going to use a different colored marker so that you can see the two fractions plotted on the number line. So I'm gonna find 3 sixths, which is right here. This should require little thought for me because the nice thing about this one is this is actually sitting on one of my benchmarks. It's sitting right at the halfway mark and that tells me right away that 3 6 is going to be rounded to 1 half. So I'm going to change that there. Once you've estimated your two fractions on the number line, then you're going to add your estimated fractions to come up with your estimated answer. This should be easy. So you have zero plus a half. You should know that that's going to equal a total of one half. That therefore means that the estimated answer to one sixth plus three sixth is going to be one half. So that's how you would estimate the sum of two fractions using a number line to help you decide how to round your fractions. In the next example, we're going to talk about how you can use mental math to help you to round your two fractions so that you can come up with an estimated sum. Okay, in this example, we're going to be estimating two fractions and this time, instead of finding the sum of the two fractions, we're going to be looking for the difference because we are subtracting them. This strategy involves using mental math and basically what you're doing with mental math is you're comparing your numerator to your denominator and thinking to yourself, how close is my numerator to my denominator to help me decide how am I going to round that fraction? You are still dealing with the same three benchmark numbers on our same three benchmarks when you're rounding your fraction. You're either going to round it down to zero, you're going to round it to a half, or you're going to round it to a whole. So in this example, we're dealing with nine tenths and we're going to subtract five eighths from that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at nine tenths, my first fraction, and I'm going to look at my numerator and I'm going to compare it to my denominator. And I'm asking myself three questions. Is my numerator, in this case nine, very far away from the number 10 on a number line? Is my numerator nine about half of the denominator on a number line or just half of the denominator in general? Or is my numerator nine very close to the number 10? Okay, those are the three questions and those are the three questions that are, you're gonna use to help you decide how to round this fraction. So I know that nine is not far from 10, so that means I'm not gonna round it to zero. I know that nine is more than half of 10, so I'm not gonna round it to a half, and I know that nine is very, very close to 10 on a number line. It's just one spot away from 10, which means it's almost going to be 10. And based on that, I'm gonna go ahead and decide to round nine tenths to one whole because it's very close to being one whole. Nine tenths is very close to being 10 tenths. Then I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna do the same thing with five eighths. I'm going to ask myself the same three questions. Is five very far away from eight on a number line? No. Is five just about half of eight on a number line? Yes, four is half of eight and five is very close to four. But I'm still going to ask myself though, is five close to eight on a number line? And some might say yes. But again, with this one, you would want to be able to tell yourself that five is much closer to four, which would be half of eight, than it is to being eight. If I were on a number line, I'd only have to jump back one time to get from five to four, but I would have to jump forward three times to get from five to eight, which means it would be more logical for me to round five eighths to one half. So five eighths will then become one half. Now I'm gonna take my two estimated fractions or my two estimated numbers and I'm going to subtract them. So one minus a half is going to equal a half, which tells me the estimated answer to nine tenths minus five eighths is going to be, I just realized you can't see that in the screen, nine tenths minus five eighths is going to be about one half. That would be my estimated answer. The next example I'm going to show you is going to use the same strategies, but this time we're going to talk about what do you do when you're dealing with a mixed number. Okay, in this example we're going to be looking at 2 and 7 eighths and we're going to subtract 
two fifths from that, but we're still going to come up with an estimated answer. So two and seven eighths is going to be, be what we call a mixed number because it has a whole number part and a fractional part. When you're estimating a mixed number or rounding a mixed number, I should say, you're going to ignore the whole number part for the time being and just pay attention to the fractional part. You can draw a number line to decide how you want to round this mixed number if you'd like to, but for the efficiency sake of it and the ease of it, I like to just use the mental math strategy and ask myself those three questions so that I can decide how am I going to round that. First question being, is my numerator far away from my denominator on a number line? No, so I'm not going to be rounding it down to zero. Next question, is my numerator seven about half of eight? Not really, it's more than half of eight, so I'm probably not gonna be rounding it to a half. And then the last question is, is my numerator close to eight on a number line? And the answer to that would be yes, it's about, no, it's not about, it is one spot away from eight on a number line, which means out of those three benchmark options, the most logical thing for me to do would be to round seven eighths to one whole. Once you've decided how to round your fractional part, you need to add your fractional part to the whole number that was already there. So I just decided that I'm going to round this to a whole. So I'm going to add this whole to the two that was already there, which means two and seven eighths will now be rounded to three. Then I'm going to move on to two fifths, asking myself those same three questions. Is two far away from five on a number line? Not really, so I probably won't round that to zero. Next question, is two about half of five on a number line? Just about, half of five would be 2.5, and two is very close to that, so rounding it to a half might be a good idea, but just to make sure, I'm gonna ask myself that third question, is two very close to five on a number line? Not really. And in all actuality, two is closer to half of five than it is to actually being five, which means I'm going to take two fifths and I'm gonna round that to a half. Now I'm gonna come up with my estimated answer. My new problem now shows three minus a half and three minus a half is gonna be two and a half, which means an estimated answer for two and seven eighths minus two fifths would be about two and a half. So, those are your three examples. Um, you have two strategies. You're gonna either draw a number line out if you'd like to or use some mental math. And the same strategies apply when you're dealing with a mixed number. The only thing you have to remind yourself is when you're estimating or rounding that mixed number, you ignore the whole number part at first, deal with your fractional part, and then adjust the whole number if necessary. So I'm gonna flip the camera around and give you my closing thoughts for this lesson. So we've just done a couple of examples together where we rounded two fractions and we used that estimation to help us find an estimated answer to our addition problem or an estimated answer to our subtraction problem with dealing with fractions. Things to keep in mind is that you do have two strategies, but I personally think the easiest strategy between those two would be to use mental math. Just think of your numerator. How close is it to your denominator? Is it far away from your denominator or not near your denominator in any way? And if that's the case, I would round it to zero. If it's about half of your denominator, then you're probably gonna to wanna to round it to a half. And if it's much more than your denominator, then I would round it to a whole number. You can use the number line, but sometimes number lines can be a little bit time consuming, but that is definitely a strategy that will work. When you're dealing with mixed numbers, make sure that you look at the fractional part first. And if you end up rounding up to a whole, you gotta make sure, <clears throat> excuse me, you gotta make sure that you incorporate however you rounded that fractional part of your mixed number to the whole number, number part because that does matter. So for your homework tonight, you were able to decide whichever strategy you'd like to use. Um, that's really it for today's lesson. Thank you so much for watching. If this video was helpful to you, please give it a thumbs up and I will see you guys in the next one.